A warm welcome to AD4 TV Radio News Update, coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's federal capital. I am Merciful Ajinomo. Nigerian President Muhammadu Buhari has condoled with members of his extended family and Daura community at large following the death of his nephew Alhaj Mutari Dauda, Mala Maman Daura's younger brother. In a statement by the Senior Special Assistant to the President on Media and Publicity, Malam Garba Shehu, President Buhari said that death is inevitable which every soul must taste one day. He prayed for the repose of his soul and a reward for his good deeds. In a similar development, Taraba State Government has confirmed the demise of the State's Commissioner for Poverty Alleviation, Naftali Kefas. He died this Friday in Jalingo, the state capital, after a brief illness. Governor Darius Ishaku, in a condolence message, described Kefas as a hard-working gentleman, adding that his death comes less than a year after his appointment as member of the state executive council to help implement government's pragmatic program of giving hope and succor to the poor and the needy at the Ministry of Poverty Alleviation. In another development, the first batch of Nigerians evacuated from the United Kingdom have arrived in Lagos this Friday. The chairman of the Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, Abike Dabiri, said the evacuees have been moved to Abuja where they will observe the mandatory 14-day isolation which is aligned with the coronavirus prevention guidelines recommended by health experts to curb the spread of the virus. Still on COVID-19, the Commissioner of Health for Lagos State, Nigeria, Professor Akin Abayomi, on Friday said that plans have been concluded to commence hydroxychloroquine clinical trials next week for treatment of COVID-19 patients in the state. He added that Lagos State has expanded its testing capacity to reach a large number of people aimed at flattening the curve. Meanwhile, the Kogi State Commissioner for Health, Dr. Saka Haruna, in a statement this Thursday said, the state is under pressure to declare that it has COVID-19 cases where there is none. The statement follows a report which claimed that four persons suspected to be COVID-19 patients had died at the Federal Medical Center, Lokoja, in the last one week. Dr. Haruna said the State Commissioner for Health, who is also a member of the governing board of the FMC Lokoja and also the incident manager for COVID-19 in the state, has not been notified of any such cases. The Zamfara State Government has sacked the Executive Secretary and two other directors of the state Zakat and Endowment Board with immediate effect and appoints Ali Musa Mafara who will serve as Acting Secretary pending when the Substantive Executive Secretary is appointed. The Board Chairman, Professor Kabiru Jabaka, however, assured the Zamfara State Government that all board members were committed to the success of all programs of the Zakat and Endowment Board in the state. In a developing story on the conviction of former Governor of Abia State, Governor Oji Kalu, the Economic and Financial Crimes Commission, in a statement by its spokesman, Dele Oyewale, this Friday, while reacting to the judgment by the Supreme Court on former Governor of Abia State, Governor Oji Kalu says it is ready to commence a retrial on this case. The Apex Court has overturned Kalu's conviction and ordered a fresh trial, adding that the trial judge, Justice Mohammed Idris, was not competent to hear Kalu's case since he had been elevated to the Court of Appeal. The Minister of Niger Delta Affairs, Senator Gotwila Pabio, has denied allegation of 40 billion naira fraud in the Niger Delta Development Commission, an agency supervised by his ministry. A statement by his Chief Press Secretary, Aniete Ekong, this Friday described the allegations as false, noting that the current administration of the NDDC has not awarded any contract. In another development, the Poultry Association of Nigeria has warned that the country may face starvation in 2021 due to the lockdown across the nation caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. The president of the association, Ezekiel Ibrahim Am, who made this known in an interview today, said there is enough food for 2020. However, there will likely be starvation in 2021 since farmers cannot move to their farms due to restrictions. He urged the federal government to wake up to his responsibility to secure farmers by mobilizing them to go to their farms and produce food for the country. We'll take a short break now when we return. New jobs report shows record 20.5 million American jobs lost in April. Stay with us. Details coming shortly. 
As the world faces the challenge of the coronavirus pandemic and governments around the world are racing against time, AD4 TV Radio thanks you all for doing your part to stop the spread of the disease. Be safe at home and practice hygiene. Protect yourself and others. Do not panic. Do not self-medicate. Listen to all preventive advice and stay at home as well as maintain social distancing. Say no to fake news. Get authentic updates from the Presidential Task Force on COVID-19, the Federal Ministry of Health, the NCDC, and of course, AD4 TV Radio, your credible and reliable channel. Please stay safe to save others. Welcome back. You're watching AD4 TV Radio News Update. The U.S. unemployment rate has risen to 14.7%, with 20.5 million jobs lost in April as the coronavirus pandemic devastated the economy. The rise means the jobless rate is now worse than at any time since the Great Depression of the 1930s. Since the pandemic began, the U.S. has suffered its worst growth numbers in a decade and the worst retail sales report on record. The report from the Labor Department shows a decline in every sector of the economy. Coronavirus deaths in Italy have risen above 30,000, the highest death toll in the European Union. The country reported 243 new fatalities today, down from 274 the day before, taking a total to 30,201. Italy has the third highest number of officially recorded coronavirus deaths in the world, after the US and the UK. Demonstrators barricaded a major highway in Kenya's capital Nairobi to protest against the demolition of their informal houses in the Kariobangi area. They lit bonfires and engaged anti-riot police in running battles. Some were filmed looting shops, motorists and pedestrians were also caught up in the clashes. Many Kenyans have criticized the government for allowing the demolitions to take place at a time when it was urging people to stay at home so as to curb the spread of coronavirus. In talking sports, football teams will now be allowed to use five substitutes when play resumes after the coronavirus pandemic, the International Football Association Board announced today. The sports lawmaking body added that it has agreed to a proposal by world governing body FIFA for a temporary change to the rules to protect player welfare. The rule change applies immediately and to all competitions that have either started or are intending to start and are scheduled to be completed by the end of December 2020. That's it on AD4 TV Radio News Update, coming to you live from Abuja, Nigeria's capital. You can join the conversation on our website at www.ad4tvradio.com. Please follow us on our social media platforms at AD4 TV Radio on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn and Instagram. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel at AD4 TV Radio. Many thanks for watching. I am Merciful Ajinomo.